Okay, praise God, everybody. Today is a great day. Jesus Christ is Lord. It's a very special, wonderful day. God has given us this day. We got to rejoice and be glad indeed. We have a wonderful message today in this uh, wisdom series. This is our uh, wisdom 269. Glory be to God. Wisdom 269. Glory, 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 glory be to God. And our message today is Naked You Will Go. Naked You Will Go. The Word of God told us that you come to this life naked and you will go naked. You come naked, you come with nothing, you do not wear clothes, you do not know even how to pronounce A, B, you don't know any alphabets when you come to this country, when you come to this very world. You don't know anything. You don't know mathematics, you don't know English. You don't have money, you don't have clothes. You don't have car, you don't have jet. You have nothing when you come to this earth. And the word of God says that when you are going, the same way you come, the same way you will go. So naked you come and naked you will go. So today, why is it that we are doing such evil in order? In order to live life in this very life, in this very world. Why is it that many people are bewitching each other, killing each other, destroying each other? When you know that naked you come and naked you will go. Why is it that people are cheating each other in order to be rich? What is the need of that rich, multi, multi, multi billionaire? What's the need of it when you know that one day you will go? The best thing to do when God bless you is to use what God gives to you to bless others. To make sure that every one of us will live happily. To make sure no one is in need. Because when you have all these riches, money, or whatever, cars, and you are not distributing it, you are not helping people, when you die, you will leave it, and then you will go naked. What a shame. And that's what the Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? So what is important to us today is your soul. Soul, soul, soul. How is your soul? Your soul, that is what is very, very much important. I would like us to read from Job, Job chapter 1. And then we can see that Job has got a lot of things but one day, there will always be one day, and that day, there is safety, there is security, there is peace. But everything that Job got was gone, was gone. And now Job realized, and Job said to every one of us today, look, listen, gentlemen and ladies, naked you come, and naked you will go. Therefore, do the right thing. So the message for today is, do the right thing. Distribute what God has given to you to everyone that is in need. Because one day, you will leave it. You will leave everything here. And then you will go naked. To go and meet the Lord. And then you're going to give account of everything that God has given to us. I want you to understand that you and me, every one of us, there will be a wages. You're going to give account. And then you're going to take wages. Which wages will you obtain? Which wages will you get from God? Our God is an awesome God. Therefore, today, I want you to understand that naked you come to this world. And naked you will go. There's no two ways about it. It's only one way. Naked you come and naked you will go. Even if 
you have you even if the clothes you wear they will put on uh, uh, they put you on before they before you be buried is gonna destroy the it's gonna be it's gonna turn to be earth because everything on this earth is earthly the gold the jewelries everything they put on you is gonna be earth it's gonna be earthly you're not gonna go with it you're not gonna go and meet the lord with it everything you have on this earth will finish in this earth so why are we going the wrong way to make riches why are we going the wrong way to hurt others why are we doing wrong thing why are we doing wrong thing why are we going wrong way in order to have money to be rich why are we hurting ourselves why are we hurting ourselves why are we bewitching ourselves when you know that when you get all those riches, when you get all those knowledge and wisdom and everything, the position, when you get all those things, you will leave it. You will go with empty handed. So today's message is, brother, be wise. The Bible says you must be wise as serpent and as innocent as dove. Let me tell you, when you lose it here on earth, you lose all this earthly thing, you will gain the kingdom of God for the sake of Christ. When you lose all the earthly things for the sake of Christ, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom, you will get to the kingdom. But when you gain everything on earth and, and forget about Christ and forget about the things of the kingdom, you're not going to go to anywhere. You're going to go down to the earth. And the devil is down there. That's where the devil belongs, to the bottomless pit. So today, let us understand that naked you come and naked you will go. So I would like us to read the scriptures and to prove this to us. Because the word of God is more powerful than my word. When we see from the scriptures, that would be a wonderful, powerful, anointed word of God. That's why we study that's why God has given us his word. So shall we pray. Father, I want to thank you for today. Thank you because of this wonderful message. Thank you for wisdom 269. Father, you are reminding us that naked we come and naked we shall go. I give you praise. I give you thanks, O oh Lord. And Father, I pray that you help us to understand, oh God, that one day we'll leave everything. Everything we have. All the clothes we have. All the jewelries we have. All the silver and gold that we have. Father, you want us to leave it. Father, you want us to leave everything that we have, that we have acquired. You want us to leave it here on earth and follow Jesus Christ and follow the living God and follow the Messiah. Our God is an awesome God. Today, Lord Jesus, I pray, help us, teach us, encourage us, and give us that spirit so that, Father, we are going to leave everything that belongs to the earth and look forward to the things that belong to the heavens. I thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are not profit us anything to gain the whole world and lose our soul. Blessed be your name, O God, as you teach us this message today. Naked you come, and naked you will go. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and amen, and amen. Praise God, everybody. You see, our God is a good God. We want to go in details of the word of God. When the word of God said, naked you come and naked you will go. Naked you come and naked you will go. I would like us to read um, Job chapter 1 from verse 13 to 22. Job is a very, very wealthy, rich man. Very, very wealthy, very, very rich man. Our God is a good God. But one day, he loses everything that he has ever worked for. And when Job was very, very rich, it never occurred to him that he's going to lose those things because there is security, there is peace, there is safety. It never ever occurred to Job that he's going to lose those things that he has. Until, until, when things happen to Job. When he, from nowhere, he lose everything 
that he have got this on here, here on earth. Never thought about that. He never thought about that. That he would lose all those things. But he lost it. And the Bible says, what comes to him is a great wisdom. He says, brothers and sisters, look, I come naked and I'm going naked. So I will still serve the Lord. So even though you lose something, even though you lose anything in your life, naked you come, naked you will go. Serve the Lord. That's the most important thing. Job said, I come to this earth naked. And I am going naked. And I, will, I must always serve the Lord. So no matter whatever you lose, no matter whatever that have happened to you, you must know, you must understand that naked you come and naked you will go. Our God is a faithful and our God is a just God. So I will read scriptures. Job chapter 1 from verse 13 to 22. And the Bible says, Then Job arose, Job chapter 1, 13 to 22, and it says, And there was a day when his son and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job. This time, this day is a doomed day which Job did not know that is coming. He did not know that this doomed day is coming. There, there is safety. There is peace. He was in their elder brothers eating the children of Job. But disaster struck. So in the same way, you may live in a peaceful country, a peaceful moment, a peaceful environment, but disaster may struck at any time. That's why you got to be ready. That's why you got to know that it is good for you to prepare yourself. So the word of God says, And there come a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen we are plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the age of the sword. And I am I'm alone, I am I escaped to tell you. Verse 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them all. And I am escaped alone to tell you, verse 17, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain and slay them. And I, your servant, have come to bring word to you. Verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters, we are eating and drinking wine in their elder's brother's house. And behold, there come a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corner of the house. And it fell upon the young man. And they are all dead and they are dead and I'm alone escaped to tell thee. Verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his hair and fell down upon the earth and worshipped the Lord. Job worshipped the Lord. He had lost everything. Lost his servant, lost his children, lost his sheep, lost his, his building, lost every single thing that he has. And the Bible says that Job worshipped the Lord. He fell down and then he worshipped the Lord. And then he says, verse 21 of Job chapter 1, and said, Naked come I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. 
the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You see, in all this, Job did not sin. Job is a righteous man. Job is a holy man. He's very righteous. And God knoweth that Job is righteous. And devil is jealous of the righteousness of Job. And devil is jealous, jealous of the approval of Job in the sight of God. So when you are righteous, when you are doing the right thing, I can assure you, your friends, your brothers, and your, and your uncles, devil can use them to be jealous of you. Your members, your church members, your good friends, your work colleagues, devil can enter into them and they become jealous of you. And they may even make you to lose your job or make you to lose your land or make you to sell your house or make you to lose whatever you have. Or take your wife and your children or whatever. Or take all your money, possessions, all your possessions and seize your account and seize your, your savings. What will you do? You got to worship the Lord. Because you will know that all this thing you get, you didn't come with it. Nobody come with it. There's no one that is a PhD in the womb. There's no PhD, there's no doctor in the womb. There's no engineer in the womb. Everyone come out and meet whatever we meet and improve ourselves in this earth. I want you to understand, brother, that no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation, whatever that is befalling you, the best thing for you to do is to do what Job did. Worship the Lord. Set your sight unto God. Set your sight unto God. Because God understands you. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Everything you have, make sure it is all connected to the heavenly reign. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is a faithful. Our God is a great God. Therefore, whatever you have, brother, sister, focus unto God. First, God first. Imagine devil, uh, imagine Job did not have God first in his life. He's going to kill himself and he's going to die for nothing. He's going to go to hell. But he has God in his life. He fell down. He worshipped the Lord. And he said, oh yes, I know, oh heavenly father. Now I understand. I've been hearing it with my ear. But I can see it with my eyes now. I can touch it with my hands. That naked I come. And naked I will go. And that I bring nothing into this world. And I'm not taking anything out of the world. He worshipped the Lord. Will you worship the Lord? Do you know that you come naked and you're going naked? Do you know you bring nothing into this world? Everything you earn in this world. The knowledge you, you have in this world. The language you speak. You learn it here. Nobody is born with a language. With um, English language or with... Um, or with a Nigerian language, or with um, uh, uh, Southeast language, or with um, uh, Asia language. Nobody is born with language. You are taught the language you know. Someone teach you the language you are speaking today. And that person may be your mother, may be your father, may be your sister, may be your teacher. Maybe you got it from internet. So every language is being taught. And who teach us how to speak? God teach us how to speak. Because when God created Adam, he teach them how to speak. He was speaking with them. He taught them how to speak. That's why God was coming down to, to the Garden of Adam to visit Adam, to teach them how to speak. Like as when you have your children, you talk to your son, you talk to your daughter, you talk to your baby. You talk to the baby, you, you tell baby what is what. What is fire? What is uh, breast? What is eye? What is mouth? What is nose? What is head? You taught the baby and the baby knows. So the baby did not come with it. I have not seen any baby that's come and start to count. This is eye. This is leg. This is foot. This is tummy. This is abdominal. This is this. No. 
everything you know was given to you by the earth. You're going to leave everything. All your qualifications, all your degree, all your beauty, all your riches, and all your wealth. Because they all come from here. Our God is a good God. Remember when your mommy have you from, from the womb. Remember, you are, like, you are just like blood. There's a lot of dirty in your body. Blood and all sort of it is all over you. You are dirty, very, very dirty to come from your mother's womb. And the nurses or your mother will clean you, make you to look nice. So beauty is given to you. Language is given to you. Knowledge is given to you. You grow in it. You didn't have any pound. I've not seen any, any child that is born that come with pound sterling in his hand. That come with pound sterling in his hand. But that child will be taught what is pound sterling. That child will be taught what is money. Will be shown money and will be given money. So everything we ever earn, everything we ever have, come from here, from the earth. And as they come from here, they will go back to this very earth. They are not going to heaven with us. What will go to heaven with us is what come from heaven. The breath, the breath of life. The breath of life. And our soul, if we do what is right. But if we do what is wrong, if we follow the worldly pattern, then our soul will go down to the bottomless pit where devil belongs. Our God is a good God. Can I assure you, everything from this earth is not good. There's nothing good on this earth. Nothing good. In this very earth, there's nothing good. Even the medicine you take have after effect. Even the car you drive can kill you. Even the aeroplane, whatever you have, the rocket, whatever you have, they can kill you. The clothes you wear, they can kill you. So everything you have, the cream you put on your body. Some people, they put cream in their body and their body turn to be dark and everything. <laughs> More especially the people that, that are uh, black and they want to be white or white and they want to be uh, black. And then it puts in all those <laughs> color changing creams and then your, your body, your hand, everything will get burnt. <laughs> so everything from this earth, everything from this earth is not good. There's nothing good here. Nothing good on earth. The computer is not good. Even as you are watching this YouTube now, I am assuring you, YouTube is not even good because there are many evil things that is happening in this YouTube. But the truth we know is that all this thing is for us, is there for us, for us to pass our time. The Bible says we are sojourners. We are strangers. We have all this thing around us. We have it around us in order to pass our time, in order to exercise our brain, in order to exercise our brain, exercise our joints, exercise our soul. It is a soul exercise. It exercises us. When we think, when we run, when we, you know, swim, all this thing, we exercise, exercise, so that we can stay a little bit longer here on earth. So I can assure you, that's nothing good here. The water you drink is not good. The sea eats a lot of people. The river swept people away. Flood. Nothing is good here, brother. The sun that you, you are enjoying is not good. That's a scorching heat. Kill people. Thousands and millions of people. Our God is a good God. Therefore, today is a very good day. I want you to understand. Everything here on earth, everything here on earth, we go back to the earth. The only thing that we go to the kingdom of God is your spirit and your soul. And your soul will face judgment according to what you've done here on earth. Because this life we are living is a borrowed life. God borrowed you this life. God borrowed you this uh, life. So you're going to give account of it. It's like you, you know, giving your, your servant or your slave or your brother or your sister. You give him money. Say, go and trade. Go and trade and come and give account to me. If you trade very well, if you lost it, you lose your job, isn't it? But when you trade very well, you get a reward. Our God is a good God. 
So Job said, I bring nothing to the world, and I'm taking nothing out of the world. Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I will go. So he worshipped the Lord. So if you have this very wisdom and knowledge, and know it, and know it that as you come, so you will go, you got to worship God. you got to choose God first. You've got to look unto God. Because looking unto God is looking unto internal life. Our God is a good God. And then if we read um, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you will see that the word of God repeated the same thing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9. And the Bible says, But of the time and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know it perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travels upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. The word of God says that look, on the last day, that people will be thinking of that safety, that is peace, but destruction will come. Just as Job's servant was thinking of safety and peace, and suddenly there came a wide wind that destroyed the whole thing. So whenever you think safety, Think kingdom of God. The only safety you will think of and you will know of and you will abide in is the safety, the safety of God. The safety of eh, God. That's the only safety you will think of. But if you are thinking of the safety of or protection, you maybe you have some people that will protect you, have the security all over your house or whatever and there is peace and you think of peace, you think of security, you think of safety in your house. You build your house strong, you made your house, you have underground, you have all these bunkers and everything you think that is safety. No. The Bible says, when people think that is safety, then destruction will struck, just as it did in the time of Job. Therefore, understand, today is the day you got to work out your salvation. The Bible says, but you brethren are not in darkness. It says, you are not in darkness. That the day will overtake you like a thief. No. Let not the coming of the Lord overtake you like a thief. The day is evil. Make haste right now while the sun shine. Because you are no longer in darkness. The light have shined. And the darkness have not comprehended the light. The light of God have shined in this earth. And the darkness have not comprehended the light of God that is shining here on earth. Our God is awesome God. Therefore, today, my beloved brother and my beloved sister, Jesus Christ is calling you to the right place. Be the children of the light. Don't live in darkness. Don't live in uncertainty. Just live in the light. Because Jesus Christ, Christ is light. The word of God says, but you are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, they sleep in the night. And they that drunk, they that get drunken, they get drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. You're gonna have the hope of salvation. You're gonna put on love. You're gonna put on. You're gonna be sober. Be prayerful. Be sober. You're gonna put on hope. You're gonna have the helmet of salvation upon you. Be sober. Be watchful. Have that faith in God. 
Trust God. Believe God. Have the faith in God. Trust God. Believe God. Have the faith in God. Trust God and believe God. God is awesome God. God is faithful and God is just. There is no one like unto God. The name of our God is a strong tower. And the righteous run into the name of our God. And the righteous, the righteous is saved. Okay. We're going to read um, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 from verse 16. The land of a rich man brought plenty of food for him. And he was a fool. This rich man was full. His land produces abundant. Instead of him to bow down and worship God. Instead of him to live as a children of light. Then he began to speak to the earth. He began to speak to the earth. To the earthly. Instead of him to speak to the heavenly. He speak to the earth. And he said to himself. Be merry. Enjoy yourself for years. And the same night, destruction struck. His life was taken. And the word of God is asking us, look. Look at how foolish he is. Look at, he forgot to give thanks to God. He forgot to worship God. He forgot to remember God that gave him all these things. But instead, he was thanking himself. He was enjoying the earth. Instead of him to enjoy the heaven. What shall he profit a man? If he gain the whole world and lose his soul. I would like us to read Luke chapter 12, verse 16. Luke chapter 12, from verse 16. And what of God says in Luke chapter 12, verse 16. And he says, And he speak a parable unto them. Jesus Christ speak a parable unto them. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater. And there will, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take things easy. Take things easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose, then whose shall those things who shall those things be? Those things that he acquired, which thou hast provided. The Bible says, he didn't remember God. He forgot all about God that blesses him. And he said to his soul, his soul, eat, drink, be merry, enjoy for many years. He forgot all about God. He started to create kingdom for himself. He started to build kingdom. You know, some people, when they have money, they start to build kingdom. They start to build towers everywhere. They make sure that they will not be in need. They make sure they're not going to be in lack. They have towers. They have businesses. They have, you know, different kind of business. So that no matter whatever, if one business closes, the other one is opening. If the other one closes, the other one is running. But they never, for, they, but they never know that when those business can be there. But once the soul is gone, you cannot, those business cannot yield anything. for It's not for you anymore. You know, some people, let's just take, for instance, um, our beloved queen in, in her memories. Look at how much gold and silver and castles that she have, land and everything. We even pay tax to him, to her. But now, destruction struck. She's gone. And she left all those gold and silver and castles and taxes that we pay to her. And then she gone. You see? So this fool, this fool, the fool rich man, 
he said to himself, My soul eats and drink and be merry. My soul eats and eats and be merry for many years. But that very night, his soul was required because his soul was a borrowed life. The life you are living today was borrowed. So that's why God has rights to take your life at any time. Because it's a borrowed life. You are living, you and me, we are living a borrowed life. God has right to take the life he's given to us. So that is why we should go to God first. God first in everything we do. God first in whatsoever we are doing. God is first. So this rich man is a very foolish man. So whenever you see rich people that do not know God, that do not have Jesus Christ first, that rich man is full and foolish. And one day, destruction will struck. And they will go. They will go. Look at in, in Russia and all this Ukraine. They never thought of this war. But there are many rich people. There are many buildings that have been destroyed. There are many commanders and top generals that have that has gone. That we never ever think that such a thing is going to happen to them. <laughs> who gonna, who knows what's going to happen to Putin? Or who knows what's going to happen to Zelensky tomorrow? Nobody, no, nobody knows. So if they are wise, they should look unto Christ, who is the author and finisher of faith. So when you are, when you are, uh, you, 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 your prosperity improves. Look unto Christ. Because one day, it's, it's going to go. One day, it's going to go. You know, this house that I'm living in now, I didn't build it. The owners has come and gone. They left it. And I have it. One day, I'm going to leave it and go. This is life. So today, Jesus Christ is saying to you, Where are you? Are you in darkness? Or are you in light? Come to the light. Reverence Christ. Let Christ be the first thing. Let Jesus Christ be the first thing in your life. Let Jesus Christ be the first thing in your life. Reverence Christ. Reverence Christ in your life. Okay. Because if you do not, destruction will strike. And when destruction comes, that's it. Let us see what Jesus Christ wants us to do. In Mark, Mark chapter 10, 17. Mark chapter 10, 17. The word of God wants us to do something in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And the word of God says, he gave us an example, a wonderful example for us to follow and for us to know what we are going to do. Mark chapter, chapter 10, verse 17. The Bible says, And when he was gone forth into the way, Jesus Christ, there came one running and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? A rich man ran to him. This, this man was very rich. And he really wanted to know. Because he kept the law. He kept the rule. He kept the commandments of, 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 of Moses. But he wanted to know what else, what remained. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is no none good but one that is God. There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandment. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Verse 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all this have I observed from my youth. This one, he's even a little bit good. He says, all these things have I observed from my youth. But Jesus Christ knows it, his weak point. Jesus Christ knows it, his weak point. Then verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Jesus loved him because he's keeping the commandment. Jesus Christ loved him. But Jesus Christ said to him, there is one thing that remains. That is one thing that remained. Jesus Christ behold him and loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go, go thy way, 
sell whatever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possession so jesus christ said you keep the law you keep the ten commandments you do what is right wonderful but that is one thing lacking there are many poor people there are many widows there there are many widows there are many poor people there that are suffering and then you keep everything for yourself it says go sell everything you have sell those things you have go and reach out to the poor reach out to the need reach out to the widow reach out to the fatherless reach out to the motherless reach out to the people that do not have reach out to the people that are sleeping on the streets many of us today we have houses upon houses empty houses but there are many beggars on the streets you may be living a good life keeping the ten commandments but what about those your brother and your sister that's on the street jesus christ says when the son of man will come He's going to separate the sheep from the goat. He's going, to go, he's going to say to the sheep, I was hungry, you feed me. I was naked, you plotted me. I was in prison, you visited me. I was homeless and you gave me a place to, 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 to rest and to sleep. Come inside. Come to me. Stay at the right hand. But for those like this very rich man that cannot go and sell what he has and give to the poor, he said to them, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was in hospital, you didn't feed it. You did not, you did not feed, you did not visit me. I was homeless and you did not give me. You did not give me a roof over my head. What else you have hundreds of them? Listen, the Bible says, in as much as you did it to others, you're doing it for Christ. When you see a hungry person on the street and feed him, you are feeding Christ. When you see a homeless person and then give me a place to, to rest and to rest and to have and to, and to live, you are giving Christ. When you see a naked person and give him clothes to clothe himself, you are clothing Christ. So Jesus Christ said to this rich man, go and sell all those things. Give it to the poor and you will have eternal life. And you will have eternal life. And again, come, take the cross and follow me. Come, let's go and serve the Lord. Let's go and live the real life. Say, come, take the cross. Take that cross and follow me. You must take that cross. You must take that challenge and follow Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided to follow him? You got to decide, take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. And God will bless you. Even if you are doing everything that is in the commandments, you must follow Jesus. You must go and preach the good news. The Bible says, if you are ashamed of me, if you are ashamed of Christ, if you are ashamed of the gospel, God will be ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of evangelism. Don't be ashamed of, uh, 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 of souls. Don't be ashamed of the name Jesus. Go. Preach the good news. Follow Jesus. Sell everything. Whatever that is holding you down. Whatever that is not giving you time to go and serve the Lord. Sell those things. And come and follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. Our God is awesome God. So he went out grieved. Sad. Because he has got great possessions. Maybe he has got many mansions, many towers, many cars, many jets, many um, Rolls Royce, whatever. He has got many uh, uh, bridges and whatever, and everything that break, make money for him. How can he sell it? You can sell it. You can sell it, brother, if you want to serve the living God, if you want to go to the kingdom of God. So the Bible said to him, go, sell those things, come and follow me. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. And Ecclesiastes has got 
one thing to tell us. Ecclesiastes has got one thing to tell us. It says, vanity upon vanity. All of those things are vanity. King Solomon is another rich man. King Solomon is another rich man. But at the end of the day, he finds out that vanity upon vanity, everything is vanity. Both the knowledge, both uh, 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 the wealth, both the wisdom he has, he say everything is vanity. Because remember, I, I tell you from the beginning that wisdom is given to you. You didn't come to this country. You didn't come to this life, to this world with wisdom. It's given to you. Your mom teach you how to read A, B, C, D, E. And then you learn from there. Some of us learn fast and some of us go slow. And some of us don't even understand anything for a long time. <laughs> but all is well. What God wants you to understand is who made you, who created you, how to love your neighbor as yourself, and how to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Our God is a good God. So Solomon said to us, vanity upon vanity is vanity. Solomon is the, Solomon is the richest man on earth. Richest in gold, in silver, in servants, in slaves, in wife. He has 700 wife and 300 concubines. That is a thousand. I have not seen anyone that will go close to that. He has got ships. He has got, he has got farms. He has got every single thing. He has got gold and silver. He, he mined gold. He mined silver. He mined diamonds. So nobody that is ever existing today is as wealthy as Solomon. But he finds out that vanity upon vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. I would like to read a little bit of it in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 because I love to read it from the scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 from verse 12. The Bible says, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I give my heart to seek and search out by wisdom. Concerning all things that are done under the heavens, this soul travel, this soul travel, had God given to the sons of man. He said, "It's soul travel." This soul travel. So when you are learning wisdom, you are exercising your soul. Say, so is this when you are in in, in school, education, studying? Practicing, you know, it's a called soul travel. You exercise your soul. Just as you exercise your body with running, with running and, you know, bodily exercise. So you exercise your soul with wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So the Bible says, This soul travel has God given to the Son of Man to be exercised therein. Verse 14. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, and all is vanity and vexation of spirit. This is the king, King Solomon, the son of King David. He said, I have seen all the works that is done on earth. I'm a king. I have I've got power, I've got authority. But he said, let me tell you, everything is vanity and vexation of the spirit. All the knowledge, the wisdom, the PhD holders, the doctors, whatever you go, whatever you study, the architects, whatever you study, whatever you study, the scientists, all those things is vanity upon vanity. Yes, you exercise your soul, but it will all go as it can. Naked you come, naked you will go. The Bible says, verse, verse 15, that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. Solomon said, that which is crooked, something that is bent, cannot be made straight, and something that is not there cannot be counted. If I don't have this, this pen, I cannot count it. If it's not here, let's just take for instance, it's gone. I can count it, so it's not here. So when something is crooked, Something is bent. It, it, it's, it's not straight. It's bent. 
What is, what is he saying? What is wrong is wrong. Whatever that comes from the earth goes back to the earth. And whatever that comes from God goes back to God. So where do you keep your mind, your spirit, your soul? Keep your mind to heavens, to the God of heavens. Because that is the reward you will have. That is internal life. But for everything here on earth, there is an end to it. Look at Solomon. Look at all the business he had. Look at all the money, silver, gold, diamond, and jewelries, everything that he had. Look at the big, big temple that he built for the Lord. Look at everything, how many wives that he got. He enjoyed himself so much to have 1,000 wives, wives and concubines. Nobody can do that. But at the end of the day, he found out that all this thing is vanity upon vanity and all is vanity. Therefore, brother, today, let me tell you, that thing that you're running after is all vanity. It's all vanity. The only thing that lasts is your soul. If you can engage your soul with God, with Christ, if you can engage your soul with heaven, if you can engage your soul with uh, heaven, then that's what's going to last. But as of anything of this earth, it's going to finish with the earth. Therefore, engage yourself to God, to righteousness, to love, to faith, to joy, the joy of salvation. Our God is a good God. Therefore, that is one message today. This message is wherever you engage your mind, if you engage your mind on the earth, you are earthly. If you engage your mind in heaven, you are heavenly. And naked you come, and naked you will go. The word of God says, Jesus Christ says, if you lose it here on earth, if you lose it here on earth, because of Christ, you will go to the heaven. But if you gain the whole world and lose Christ, then you will go to hell. But let me tell you, the Bible says, you know, some people said, oh, but we can be rich and still go to heaven. The word of God says it's going to be hard. It is as hard as the head of a camel going through the eye of a needle. It is a hard thing. You want to maintain everything you have. You want to you wanna maintain all the friends that you have. You want to you wanna have everything for yourself. And then you want to go to heaven. You are not distributing. You are not sharing. You are not helping others. And you want to go to heaven. No, you will not. The Bible says, go and sell those things and come and follow Christ. You can still have those things and give to charity here and there. But are you following Christ? Have you taken up your cross? There are three things to do. It says, go, sell those things, take up your cross, follow me. Go, sell those things, take up your cross, follow Jesus Christ. So it's not only you're going to sell your things, but you're going to take up the cross, take up the challenge, take up the word of God. Take up the suffering for Christ and follow Jesus Christ. Our God is a good God. We have got a wonderful, beautiful example in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. We can see there are two different kinds of people in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. One is Barnabas. He sold his field and he bring it to the apostle. He was blessed. And we have Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira, they went and sold everything they have. And they keep some. They kept some. And then bring some to the apostles. So they lose it all. This is as of the apostles, chapter 4, from verse 31 to 37. I would like to read it very, very quickly. Ananias and Sapphira. They were ended. They lose it. They lose everything they have. I will read as of the apostles, chapter 4, from verse 31 to 37. I love to read the scriptures. The word of God says in Acts of God, chapter 4, chapter um, 4, 31 to 37, and this says, okay. And when they had prayed, the place where the place were shaking, where they were assembled together, where they assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and they speak the word of God with boldness. And they speak the word of God. These the apostles, they were all filled with the spirit of God. And they speak the word of God with boldness. They have boldness. They speak the word of God. And then I will continue to read from verse 2. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any man, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Verse 33. And with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as we are, as many as have possessions of land, they went, they sold them and brought the peace and brought it to the feet of the disciples. Verse 35. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and distributed and distribution was made unto every man according as he needed. Verse 36. And just and Joseph, who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of a and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and lay it at the apostle's feet. This is uh, this is Barnabas. And then verse chapter 5 of Acts of Apostle from verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the prize. His wife also being privily, knowing it, and brought a certain part and lay it in the apostles' feet. Barnabas sold his land and they bring everything. The Bible says, sell everything. Whatever you have, bring it to the Lord. Feed the poor and the needy. Barnabas did that. But Ananias and Sapphira sold and then they kept some. They kept some riches. So they are like this rich man that went out with sadness. So today, are you keeping some behind and bring some to Christ? Bring everything. Bring everything to God. Your spirit, your soul, your body. Bring everything to Christ. Because if you don't bring everything... To Christ, then you will lose everything. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a acceptable day. Don't be like Ananias and Sapphira that sold their portion of land and they kept some because they want to be more rich. They want to be more rich. Eye service. Never do eye service as a child of God. Never ever do eye service. When you are serving, when you're doing eye service, God knows your heart. God knows where you kept everything. Some people, they come, they say they don't have, and they will not give. But they have a lot more than those that are giving. God is seeing you. God knows you. Therefore, today, live a celebrated life. Live a giving life. Live a life that will take you to, the, to God's kingdom. The life of giving will take you to God's kingdom. So Jesus Christ says, go, sell everything that you have. Give to the poor. Because... Everything that you have, we end here. Naked you come and naked you will go. That's the message today. Sell everything you have. Sell your pride. Sell your wisdom, your knowledge, everything you have. Give it to the poor. Train children. Teach children. Some people, they are giving lessons and lectures. They want to, they want to get money. They have schools. They have university. They want to put the money, the price to the, to the, highest, to the highest price so that they, even the poor cannot be able to gain the knowledge. Sell whatever you have. Everything you have, give to the poor. Jesus Christ loves you. Don't keep too many riches. Because if you keep too many riches, you're going to go to hell. Just sufficient for the day. The Bible says, let whatever you have be sufficient for you. Be sufficient. Be self-sufficient. The little you have, let it sufficient you. Let it be self. Let it be sufficient with what you have. What you do not have. Do not go and start to craving with what you do not have. Do not crave to do what you do not have. Don't go and look for what you do not have. 
or what you cannot be able to obtain. Today is the day of salvation. Make sure that no matter how little or how big you have, be satisfied with it. And when you see someone in need, the widow, fatherless, the motherless, bless them. Sell what you have. Go and give to them. And follow Christ. Pick up your cross. Listen, you can sell everything you have and you do not pick up your cross. Then you will not go to the kingdom of God neither. Remember, Barnabas, he sold everything he had. Then he picked up his cross. And the Holy Spirit appointed him and Saul. He said, separate for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work. That's how we give to them. He sold everything he had. He took up his cross. He followed the disciples. And the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost gave him a, a work to do. So separate for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the job, for the work that they would do for me. So the Holy Spirit separated Barnabas and Paul. And this Barnabas, Barnabas is the rich man that sold everything he has and give to the poor and follow Christ. And take up his cross and follow Christ. Therefore, brother, today, sell whatever you have. Take up your cross. Follow Christ. If you do that, you will be the sons of your father. And God will definitely and surely bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the conclusion today, brothers and sisters, we know that the wealth, the possessions that you have in this world, if you keep them, you will lose internal life. If you keep them, you lose internal life. But if you lose them or sell them for the sake of the kingdom, don't lose your position and say you are going to kingdom. No. You're going to lose them for the sake of the kingdom or sell them for the sake of the kingdom and take up your cross and follow Christ. If you do that, you will gain eternity. Remember now, when you sell your possession, that is not the end. When you feed the poor, that is not the end. You're going to sell your possession, you're going to feed the hungry, and you will take up your cross and follow Christ. Just as Barnabas did. He sell his property, he sell his possessions, and then he feed the poor, he did everything, he take up his cross and follow Christ. And he was sent to go to with Paul, with Apostle Paul, to go and preach the good news. Do the same today, and God will bless you. Remember, naked you come, and naked you shall go. Naked you come, one day you will go. And when you think, oh, maybe Great Britain is a peaceful country, one day disaster will strike. Disaster will come. Maybe say America is a peaceful country, it's a, safe, it's a very safe place for me to live. No, one day disaster will come. So there's no safe place on earth. There's no safe hole on earth. There's no safe, safe country on earth. Anywhere you are, one day disaster will come. Remember, the coming of the Lord is just like a thief in the night. Therefore, repent. Today is the day of salvation. Today is an acceptable day. And I pray that the Almighty God will bless you and will bring you to understanding of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So go, brother. Sell everything you have. Give to the poor. Take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. And then you will inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, one more time, naked you come and naked you go. Whatever you have in this earth must surely go back to the earth. And I pray that Almighty God will bless you as you are getting wiser every day. Remember, this is our wisdom series. May God bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful wisdom, 269. You say great wisdom. Naked we come and naked we will go. Father, I want to thank you because, Lord, that our life is not, oh God, depending on the, the possession that we have. Eternity did not depend. It's not depending on the possession that we have. It depended on our relationship with God, following Jesus Christ. It's depending on looking unto Christ, who is the author and finisher of our soul and of our life. And getting rid, as we look unto Christ, we get rid of all those things that brings, brings us down or tie us down. All those weights. Riches are wet. 
this weight they pull us down some of us don't go to church because of they are going to work some of us don't go to church don't serve god because they are traveling for business but father i pray that we're gonna sell all these things and take up our cross to follow jesus christ father help us lord jesus today in jesus name more especially may we all receive jesus christ as our personal lord and savior and may we all be blessed forever and ever and ever in jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen and may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit abide with us now and forevermore amen and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever and ever amen for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death in jesus name amen and amen and amen remember naked you come and naked you shall go vanity upon vanity all is vanity jesus love you brother god bless you in jesus most holy righteous perfect name we pray amen remember bless it's a great day jesus christ love you bye